I'll top of the morning to ya. It's uh, Wednesday. Or is it Tuesday? It is Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday, I think. It feels like Thursday, though. Wish it was Friday. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I W I W F N. <laughs> That's I wish it was Friday night. Ooh. Mm. Um, well, thank you guys. I have to join us more. I think we're going to have a pretty awesome uh, time with the Can't Lord. Hmm? Can't hear you. How about now? Better? Better. Okay. Uh, to, this morning we have John chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. And we are reading about the conversation Jesus has with a Jewish leader, a Pharisee, I believe, and this man's name is Nicodemus. And uh, yesterday we read about Jesus um, at Passover, cleansing the temple. And uh, if, you, if you went online and saw our, our live stream posted yesterday, it was titled Temple Tantrums, uh, which actually was pretty funny. I got a turtle out of that. Um, so today, um, so I guess we'll we'll jump into it here. Uh, right, Lord, thanks for this time. Thank you for your word, Jesus. Really, really thankful that we all this is written down. We get to see a lot of things that happen with you, what you said, or how you taught. And you teach us through through these words. These are your words. Thank you so much for this gift. Okay, I think we can do three readings. I'd like to take the other two. I can take one. Yeah, one. Okay. I can do. I can do. Uh, first and last. Okay, well, I, I could do a last one. I'm good with the third. Okay. <clears throat> awesome. All right. Well, let's go here. Chapter 3, verse 1, 3, 8. Now a certain man, a Pharisee, named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council, came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come to us, for no one could perform miraculous signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus replied, I tell you the solemn truth, unless a person is born from above, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Now Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born if he cannot enter his mother's womb and be born a second time? Jesus answered, I tell you the solemn truth. Unless a person is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I said to you, you are a born from God. The wind blows for it, and you hear the sound it makes but you do not know where it comes from and where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Okay, I'll hand it over to you now. All right. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb as he be born? Jesus, Jesus answered, Truly, 
Truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel what I said to you. You must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform such miraculous signs that you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Well, what's uh, what's standing out today? Words or phrases? Standing out thoughts, questions, confusions, ruminations. Well, Nicodemus makes the comment in verse two. We. Rabbi, we know that you've come from God as a teacher. But yet all the other we's are trying to kill him. Mm -hmm. Makes it sound like there's a, a contingent of believers amongst the Jewish leaders. Nicodemus perhaps being one. Why do you think Nicodemus came to Jesus? What is he looking for? I'm just wondering, I'm wondering why Nicodemus came to meet with Jesus. What is he looking for? Don't you think God touched his heart? It seems like it, yeah. Yeah, he seems like he's, well, I guess there could be multiple reasons. One reason, I mean, they could all be happening at the same time. Like one is that he's, he's genuinely inquisitive. The Lord has spurned him on and made him, made Nicodemus curious. You know, God has made Nicodemus curious. He wants to know more about this Jesus who's doing these amazing things. Could he actually be the Messiah? As the Jews would have said, Moshiach. But also maybe he he could have gone because he was sent by the Jewish ruling council to gather intel. He was I think it's really interesting in verse 2 says, Rabbi, we know that the teacher who has come from God, for no one has come from the miraculous science that you do it must go. So it's like that's how he starts his dialogue. You know, with this 
Adoration, I guess, kind of. And it's like he's gonna. My first question is, and I wonder if what's reported here was actually the first thing that Nicodemus says to him in their conversation, or was it just one of the things that Nicodemus said that written down? Because it was kind of the key part of the conversation. But if it was the first thing that he actually said, yeah. and that would lead me yeah. to believe that he was, first, he was, that was how he was starting. And he was going to say something. Like this. Hmm. You know? Yeah. It was like, oh, I'm going to stir up Jesus a little bit and get him on my side, and then I'm going to tell him what I really want to tell him. Right? Um, I'm going to get Jesus to trust me and I'm going to ask him these other things or say these other things. But it's like Jesus kind of stops him. Replies, oh, yeah, oh, and but you know, you say, you know, I, I come from God. Well, if you want to come from God, then you have to be born again. I don't know, for some reason, on like the notes of the Bible. It's kind of saying that Nicodemus, um, with them saying that Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night, it says usually uh, carries a symbolic overtone of spiritual darkness. Um, and they're basically saying that he's, when he referred to Jesus as rabbi, um, generally like it denotes a meaning of respect because rabbi means teacher. But in this case, they don't believe it does because they know that Jesus didn't have any like training behind being becoming a rabbi. And they said Nicodemus knew that. So that's why Nicodemus said that almost kind of like as a taunt. Hmm. Hmm. And then like, then Jesus obviously kind of took the high road and stopped him before he could even start going. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely possibility i know that like in other parts i think we read in luke accounts of you know the, the pharisees coming to jesus like in public and starting out with you know, oh great teacher we know that you're but they're actually trying to trap him right in a logical game um, to get him in trouble and so they would use this sort of approach um so yeah, could be doing that. <laughs> but I think there's also isn't there also Nicodemus? There's reference to him. Yeah, where it seems like he's kind of a believer. Yes. Yes. Uh, I think it was in Luke. Maybe it was somewhere else that we read. Um, he was one of the two that actually helped to bury Jesus after he had died. Like he went to the trouble to help Joseph of Arimathea, was it? Yeah. Yeah, so at some point there was, you know, Nicodemus, it seems, did believe. Mm -hmm. Whether or not he did hear it, I'm not sure. Dan, what were you going to say? I'm just going to say, if you watch <clears throat> The Chosen, their interpretation of this meeting was it was held at night because of embarrassment. Nicodemus didn't want anybody else to know that he was um, <clears throat> not just questioning Jesus, but quasi-pursuing him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do remember, remember that. Those were cool scenes. I Nick can't hear shows you approving in at all. I don't know if anybody not? else can, but it's it's muffled. It sounds like you're on your laptop mic. My microphone. Check. 
Doesn't look like it's not going to be very strong. Hmm. Huh. Turned up. Okay. That's better. Better? Yes. Uh, now it I can't better. hear you. It was better. <laughs> oh, I see. Now the... Yes, no. Yeah, I see why. Better? Ah. Okay, there we go. Just, just... Good morning. I got this headset thinking it was going to be a great thing. It's just turned out to be a uh, disappointment. Oh, well. Such is life. Yeah, I remember those chosen episodes. I really actually like how they did, depicted Nicodemus in those. Mm -hmm. um, Lauren, have you watched the the chosen uh, TV series? Uh -uh. No, I haven't even heard of it. It's really, really, really great. Really great. Recommend it. Um, okay. It's basically uh, just about Jesus and, and the disciples and um, recounts what we're reading about right now uh, in the Gospels, mm -hmm. really the Gospel account. Right. Yeah, I'll have to look it up. You said it was called Chosen? Yes. Yeah, The, the Chosen. Yeah. It's uh, from this uh, group called Angel Studios. And the, you can watch it on their website. Um, and they also have an app you can download and watch it in the app. It's not on, I don't, not on Netflix. It is on mm -hmm. Prime if you have Amazon Prime. Yeah, I do. Yeah, okay. it's on Prime, I think. So, um, all right, what other thoughts? I was picking apart the last paragraph of Jesus' statement here. No one can be, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Um, um, and then, the wind blows where it pleases, so it is with everyone born of the Spirit. And just interesting word pictures there that I'd really not considered much of before. Because we always just fast forward to John 3.16, you know. Oh, yeah. It's coming up, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> What do you think is, what's he saying? What strikes you in that? I don't know. It's, it strikes me as like odd. The wind blows where it pleases. No one knows where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Like, are we supposed to, what are we supposed to take from that? I don't know. In my book, it's in spirit translate the same in Greek and Hebrew. Okay. Wind and spirit, they're the same word. Yeah, in Greek and Hebrew words. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? I wonder why they translated it as wind here. Oh, because it blows. Wind and spirit. Wow, that's kind of interesting. They're the so, same word. So the spirit blows where it wishes. Or moves, yeah, moves where it wishes. Hmm. Mm. You hear the sound it makes, but you don't know where it comes from and where it's going. So it is with everyone who's born of the Spirit. Changes Maybe it. Full meaning. Interesting. So maybe it's like you can't see, physically see, when someone is born again, right? It's like physically, they're generally the they're the same person mm -hmm. but you can see that the change in their life there's a manifestation there's like a just like the wind blows through the trees and creates this thing around the wind mm -hmm. <laughs> it affects the wind affects the things around it and that's how you know it's it's there the same thing is true maybe about a believer who's 
been changed because God affects the things around that person. You can see the in their life the manifestation of the Spirit. It's interesting that we're talking about that this morning because it is howling outside. Oh, is it? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that that interpretation, Lauren, that's interesting to change the word wind to the word spirit makes that sentence read totally different. Yeah, don't, he's verse seven. Don't, don't be amazed that I said to you. It's like, I read that as, don't be surprised, Nicodemus. And Nicodemus is surprised. I think he's surprised because he's a Pharisee. And as a Pharisee, he would have believed that he, because it's his birthright, a son of Abraham, you know, a leading Pharisee, very religious, mm -hmm. adhering to the law. It's like, I'm going to receive the kingdom of God. He's very confident in his own strength to receive the kingdom. And when Jesus is like, no, that's not going to get you there, buddy. <laughs> he's surprised. He's like, what do you mean? I have everything going for me. And Jesus says, don't be surprised that I say you must be born from above. Just because you can't see the spirit doesn't mean it's not real. The Holy Spirit, you know, which is the kingdom of God on earth, I guess. Um, something else is interesting in verse five, we back up a little bit. Jesus answered, I tell you the solemn truth, unless a person is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What do you think he's saying here? Well, remember when Jesus was baptized, as he came out of the water, came back up, the dove settled on his shoulder and stayed, and that was the Spirit. Is it a reference to that? Is that what happens to us when we're baptized? Hmm. That's hmm. One, I had that thought, but I also thought, well, Nicodemus just got done with this this... this this statement of physical birth. <laughs> so unless you are physically born and then born of the spirit, that's what, that's what I'm taking it as. Born of water, meaning physical birth. Born of the spirit, meaning salvation. Yeah, I think that's right. And I just had this new idea about baptism. So when we're born, right, we we come from, you know, our mother's water breaks, right? And we're born of water. <laughs> and, but when we are baptized, we go back into the water. <laughs> It's almost like kind of like, you know, we go back into the water and that the baptism symbols symbolizes death, it's like a going back. And now, you know, we come out of the water and we're, we're born in the spirit, right? Mm -hmm. it's, I, I think it's a, I think it's a symbol and not a requirement for salvation. Right. But it's, it's a, interesting symbology especially when it when we talk about 
being born of, of water. Mm -hmm. I think it's symbolic too, but I know there are other branches of Christianity that do, do take it a lot more literally. I think, I mean, I wish Dylan were here, he'd know, but I think mm -hmm. Catholics take it like as a, when you are born, you must baptize this child into the church. And that yeah. essentially assures their initial salvation. And then from then on, they have to keep repenting and repenting and repenting. At least that's how I've understood it. Practically, it also perpetuates the church because it mm -hmm. commits them to Catholicism. Right. <clears throat> What about the the thief on the cross that was next to Jesus? And Jesus said, surely you will be with me in heaven this day. <laughs> that thief was not baptized. He couldn't right. have been before he died. Mm -hmm. Like there's examples where people aren't. And, um it would be hard to justify or explain that away, I guess. But Right. Well, you said it, if you can remember it, you said it a minute ago that it, baptism is a declaration, but not a, not a necessity or how yeah. you phrased that. Yeah. Hmm. Um, So what's our takeaway for today? What can we apply to our lives out of this? I'm not sure we have one in this specific, just this short passage. I think it's one of those Maybe we should enter some sort of little holding pattern for tomorrow. <laughs> Wait for it. Wait yeah. for it. It's coming. Hmm. And Jesus can call you regardless of who you, what your station in life is. You can be Nicodemus, a Pharisee, a mm -hmm. ruler of the Jews, and God can still draw you in hmm. totally doesn't matter who you are doesn't matter what you've done that's really great this is like for me that that hooks what you said dan hooks into like just sharing um sharing jesus you can share jesus with anybody it doesn't matter who they are what they look like whether they look like they have it together or where they look like they are have completely fallen apart God can invade anyone and will you know invade anyone's life and that also kind of links with verse 8 the wind blows wherever it will and you hear the sound but you don't know where it comes from or where it's going so it is with everyone who's born of the spirit so God's in control of you know who receives the spirit and who doesn't and when and so it's not up to me to share Jesus in the right way or the wrong way. I'm just, he's, he told, he just tells me to share him and to love others. Well, and not worry about the outcome. The wind is going to blow wherever it will. The spirit is going to go wherever it does, <laughs> you know, cast the seed. It's up to God to make it grow. Yeah. That's my takeaway. I think. Yeah, I like it. All right, let's live by it. Let's do it. Um, any final thoughts before we wrap up? No. Not for me. All right. We'll close this out in prayer. We'll wrap it up. Lord, what a cool... Um, opportunity to to see your conversation with Nicodemus um, 
Lord, we thank you for this vision, this this picture of you uh, teaching him in such a loving way, but also holding him accountable. You do this with us. And we soften our hearts to your guiding and your leading. Lord, help us today to to walk in this truth or to really trust you and trust your Holy Spirit that it is working, it is moving, that we're not in control of how you work with other people, but you've given us a job to do, and that is to share your good news with others and to love others well. And you have the rest. You're in control of the outcome. We release that to you today, Lord God. We love you. Thanks for caring for us and our families. Guide us today, Lord. We open our ears and our hearts to you. Surrender our day to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, brothers. We'll talk to you later. I have one more uh, one more night here in Topeka, Kansas. Okay. So I'll be I'll have one more uh, evening study tonight um, at seven thirty Colorado time. All right. So, uh, but um, we'll uh, talk to you later. Sounds good. Thanks. Bye. Have a good one. Yeah.